Welcome to beautiful Mavi. We are at the Snapdragon Summit 2023. And I have here with me SVP and GM of Compute and Gaming, so Kedar Kondap. Thank you. Thanks for having me on the show. <laughs> yes. And uh, so, series of announcements yesterday. The cat is finally out of the bag. I would say that the dragon is finally out of the bag. <laughs> uh, so, a lot of excitement among uh, industry about the X Elite. So, can you tell me, is it just about uh, the new Orion CPU or your pretty face? What exactly, why everyone is so excited about it? <laughs> um, we're obviously, we're very excited about it because uh, uh, this is something that we've been long waiting for. Uh, the Snapdragon X Elite were, uh, is a platform that we expect will completely revolutionize the PC industry. Um, lots of capabilities in there that we're very proud about. We talk about uh, game-changing performance. We talk about the leadership and performance per watt. Mm -hmm. uh, we talk about uh, a very, very powerful GPU. Uh, we talk about the best-in-class AI engine uh, that goes all the way up to, say, 45 tops and a total of 75 tops for the whole platform. So it's a lot of on-device uh, AI that you can do with the AI engine. So overall, we're very excited with what uh, platforms the Snapdragon X Elite is going to enable. Yeah, that's great. And so all of these was not heard before. <clears throat> the all you said, like GPU, NPU, mm -hmm. AI engine, 45 tops, and overall for NPU and for the overall <coughs> system, 75 tops, right? So this is like setting a new benchmark for the industry. Do you see this is more of an inflection point where your vision, your capabilities are aligning with Microsoft's vision and capabilities? And that is where I think there is a resonance. I mean, Microsoft is a great partner. There is just no doubt about that. Uh, they've talked about uh, this for a while now. Uh, together, we've uh, launched multiple products, including the Surface Pro 9 5G. Uh, there's a lot of work going on between the two companies that is uh, very, very exciting. Uh, Satya talked about it in his... Uh, a fireside chat with uh, Cristiano. So definitely a lot of work going on between uh, between both the companies. I think, uh, you know, there's a lot that comes together to bring uh, this mm -hmm. platform out. Uh, when we talk about putting in something uh, like 45 tops and uh, we talk about uh, all the ISVs in the enterprise are going to take advantage of it, we do see 2024 and 2025 as inflection points mm -hmm. for a PC. Right? The industry is rapidly moving. Uh, uh, AI PCs are taking off. Right. Uh, there's a big migration of an install base of uh, Windows users that are waiting for a refresh with uh, a new PC, right. uh, as well as uh, you know uh, the modern um, management of a PC, like mm -hmm. uh, things such as Intune and stuff are also moving in that direction. So overall, there's lots of inflection points. We believe 2024 and 25 will sort of uh, fit in really well with uh, the launch of the Snapdragon X Elite. Great. So, do you see Microsoft also doing something different this time? Means you guys have been working for the last three to four years or even more, I would say, uh, with HCX uh, recently, right? Uh, but something has changed. I think obviously the chat GPT has brought on AI revolution everywhere. But it's you, you guys have been doing this for ages now at, on mobile. And now on PC, do you see Microsoft also using those models within their OS and then within their applications, which will help power those intelligent experiences? I think, uh, you know, Microsoft has always been at the forefront of enabling a lot of these use cases, right? Last year, we uh, talked about Windows Studio FX. So this AI work that we're all talking about mm -hmm. is not new, new to Qualcomm. It's been something, like if you go back in time, almost 10 years, uh, we've had uh, AI engines, we've had NPUs for the last so many years. Uh, even when we talk about uh, Windows Studio FX or uh, things such as background blur or gaze correction or uh, eye contact and stuff, do a lot of the use cases were running on our NPU. Uh, right. It's just the commercialization of this <laughs> term now that everybody is uh, trying to resonate with the fact that these use cases actually mean AI. Mm -hmm. right. But uh, simple things like, you know, we talked about uh, now you remove blemishes and how uh, the camera is very intelligent to be able to do that. A lot of that was running... Uh, many of those use cases were running on the NPO even in the past. So I think this uh, partnership will extend mm -hmm. uh, a lot of work that we're doing. Obviously, Microsoft has some uh, great investments that they've done with uh, OpenAI. And so mm -hmm. I believe this, uh, what you'll see is uh, something you haven't seen before. So do you then see a shift of this all AI work going to the next level with generative AI? That is 
a major major trigger point do you see that i think the ai is just going to be pervasive there right. isn't a single industry that is not going to take advantage Correct. of ai right from whether it is manufacturing operations if you are a sales leader if you're some whether it's code generation whether you are in law you're going to see the benefit of ai right. like uh, let's talk about a specific example right if you're a realtor you're in the in the market and you want to crunch numbers very quickly you're a mm -hmm. sales rep and you want numbers crunched or you're an engineer that's helping accelerate writing code mm -hmm. you're going to take advantage of uh, ai Correct. so the work that's happening is you know you heard yesterday or uh, this morning i think all of these different models that we support in ai uh, i think we're just at the beginning there's right. a lot more work uh, models are going to get reduced in size there are uh, each uh, enterprise is going to look at what models fit best Correct. for their needs uh, what's the right quantization technique and so this will evolve and mm -hmm. i think we're just at the beginning of uh, the AI uh, revolution. And so right. that's why the benefit is when you see uh, Snapdragon Excelite, we support 45 tops and 75 total tops. Mm. And the tools in the ecosystem is making sure it's all available for app vendors Correct. to be able to port their applications. Correct, absolutely. We mm. love the demos, loved so many partners came on stage, demoed the capabilities of the platform, as well as what they can do, uh, <coughs> creating newer experiences, intelligent experiences, right? Uh, so. Uh, with respect to, I would say, uh, uh, the announcement, which was more on AI stack, uh, where you are having, you're getting into this, I don't know, it's a marketplace type model, or you are having those 30 uh, key marquee LLMs, mm -hmm. right, available, right, of the start optimized on your platform. So do you see that kickstarts and gives you a big differentiation, a wider lead compared to someone like Intel or AMD, which are, maybe which will be there but again you have another advantage of low power doing yeah. it at low power yeah i think the uh, ai is obviously uh, quite uh, advanced right now and it's still evolving um, there's work that is happening every day uh, we're talking about llms but uh, the reality is there's going to be x to x modalities happening very very mm -hmm. quickly right in other words it's we showed stable diffusion so that is text to image uh, you're going to see text to video, video to PowerPoint, PowerPoint to stuff. It's going to start getting. I think uh, the way to think about AI is uh, the way I think about it is emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. And uh, you want to be able to connect with uh, the device and the device needs to be able to connect with you. Sure. Uh, personalization, uh, immediacy, uh, security, privacy. So we obviously don't want any latency. So I think all of what that is is still very early. So it's hard to say which of these is going to, uh, you know, necessarily take off uh, yeah. in any and every uh, vertical that we talked about. But overall, I think the, the goal for us is that we're an enabling tool to make sure that we go across all of these different uh, areas mm -hmm. and provide the necessary platform, the tools and everything necessary for uh, the app developers to make something different. That, that's great. You also said uh, during the Q&A today, uh, your focus is on consumer, but also on enterprise. And you have teams which are dedicated to talk to CIOs and talk to all the enterprise and bring on different softwares and uh, optimize it for the silicon, right? Yeah. Uh, so what about from consumer point of view, if I just go back one step and say, okay, the, the, since this is based on ARM or uh, sort of, right? Uh, so do you see there is a big uh, advantage for someone <coughs> like a Xiaomi? or someone like Oppo or uh, OnePlus 2 bring, uh, have some homogeneity across the platforms and it would be easier for them to, right now they are, for example, Xiaomi announced a 6 billion parameter model on for their smartphones, but can they scale it to the PC and yeah. would this be a new uh, entry point for all these players? I think uh, your question is specifically on AI or in general the versatility of uh, Excel getting adopted by both versus of Excel Elite as well as uh, being a common platform like ARM yeah. based uh, yeah. smartphone as well as and so we Qualcomm. Yeah, one. it's a good question. We provide, that's why what we do is we provide all of these different underlying functions. We support, you saw the variety of models that we support as in, <coughs> in China mm -hmm. and outside China. In addition to enabling all of those models, we also support all the tools, like things like PyTorch and stuff. So like Correct. we support Onyx runtime, we support PyTorch, we support like a broad spectrum. Mm. So yes, when you're developing an application, 
that application is pretty uh, versatile and it can get used. And then you saw the benefit of Snapdragon Seamless where, right. uh, you know, these <laughs> devices are going to be able to cohesively exactly. talk to each other and the expectation is that when you do something on your phone, you can translate it to your PC and then vice versa and stuff. So, there will be this uh, seamlessness across and cohesiveness across devices. I think that is a great uh, lock-in feature for Qualcomm as well to have those compute across. So, uh, and anyways, you said it could, Snapdragon Seamless could be compute agnostic or hardware agnostic, mm -hmm. but still, uh, initially it would from optimization point of view, if I am Xiaomi, if I want to be someone like Apple, it would. It is a great way to have intelligence as well as at the same time the seamlessness across right. the, my devices, right? Right. Oh, definitely, definitely. That's great. Uh, maybe last question from my end. Uh, you have been in this industry for long, and you have seen the entire journey of compute, right? Uh, so, what what are the top two use cases which you are excited about? maybe a top two or top five, whatever, in this decade with respect to AI and PC? Yeah. I think, um, think about it for a second, right? When you're, uh, let's go enterprise because we're all uh, working <laughs> professionals. So that's an easy uh, thing to, for us, a uh, lot of us to relate to. Uh, in an enterprise environment, if I can find a way to accelerate what I'm doing in a much more effective manner, mm. And if I can do my job much faster, much mm. quicker, and more intelligently, mm. it's going to be incredible. Second, I know I talked about personalization earlier, right. but if the PC can understand what I'm looking for and be able to already sort of branch predict what I'm <laughs> trying to do, it's incredible, right? I'll right. give you simple examples. Today, uh, things like mail, when uh, you know there's some intelligence in the mail where you know if there's a certain folder that you want to put the mail in, it automatically detects and Detection. says, this is from uh, your son, looks like it's something to do with your son's school. So wherever it says, uh, Correct. you know, Kedar's son, I have a folder, it automatically says, let me put it in that folder. So okay. it's these little things that matter hmm. where, you know, it's the PC, that's what I mean by uh, emotional intelligence, is personalization between us and the PC that's going to come. And I think we're, this is just the beginning, right? It's almost yeah. like, uh, I feel like going back to the modem <laughs> days where, uh, you know, you talk about 4G and 5G. I still remember we, uh, Neil and I talked about, you know, use cases where you're saying, hey, I'm downloading a movie before I get on a plane so I can watch it on the plane. Right. And now you think about it, it's a very, very common use case. You literally, Correct. before you get on a plane, you download a movie uh, and you get on a plane and you watch it. So Correct. I think it's just the beginning. Uh, what we're going to see is going to be uh, uh, significantly better than what, what we're seeing today. Absolutely. And I, I, I agree, productivity is number one use case. And Obviously, eventually it helps with the work-life balance, Correct. which is great for us. Correct. Like we are here away from home. <laughs> and working. <laughs> and working. So great. Thanks, Kedar. No, thank it you, was a great conversation. Thank you Likewise. very much for the input. Thank you for having me on the show. Thank you. Thank you.